coming up. Pressure is on the government as their mission to get the COVID-19 vaccine to Americans is off to a slow start. And we are starting off this first full week of 2021 on a soggy note. I'll have more details in that work week forecast. It's coming up. From Camp KV Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Good morning, Northwest, and thanks for starting your work week with us. I'm Monica Petrozelli. It's a very special week because it's actually the very first week of 2021, Kristen. Yes, it is. Our very first show. It is. Year. And, you know, yesterday was a gorgeous day. We were just talking about it. The sun was out. It was a little bit breezy, but it was certainly nice just to, just to feel that sunshine mm -hmm. on your skin as you it stepped was. outside. And we hit 56 degrees yesterday, so wow. fairly mild for this time of year. Now, changes are moving through this morning, so let's talk about some of the rainfall that we have around the area this morning. Uh, there's a look at downtown Yakima. The rain is coming down for you as well. So most of the lower elevations just looking at pure rainfall out the door this morning. So you can see the soggy weather that's moving through the Tri-Cities this morning. A little bit of some drizzle, but eventually you'll have some steady rainfall around the foothills of the Blues this morning from Walla Walla into Pendleton. So everybody should plan on the wet weather for that commute back to work early this morning. Those temperatures right 54 in Walla Walla, 40 degrees in the Tri-Cities, a little bit cooler down over into Yakima, 39, 38 over into Ellensburg. And those winds are picking up a bit for today as well, especially there along the foothills of the Blues. So there's a look at your Monday Monday forecast a little bit drier, maybe a few peaks of some sunshine this afternoon with that high of 53. But more wet weather to track as we look ahead to your work week forecast. More details, Monica, it's all coming up. Thank you, Kristen. The United States has now surpassed 350,000 COVID-19 deaths. Johns Hopkins University reported 2,398 new deaths as of yesterday. That brings the total number of deaths to 350,186. The U.S. has reported nearly 20.5 million confirmed cases. And more than 4.2 million people in the U.S. have gotten their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. But that's short of the 20 million vaccinations the federal government repeatedly promised to have administered by last month. Some experts say the United States needs to speed up the COVID-19 vaccination process. Right now, vaccines are being given to healthcare employees and long-term care patients. But officials are hoping to soon have them available to a wider group of the general public. Some states are seeing post-holiday surges, including California, where more than 45,000 new infections were confirmed confirmed just yesterday. And the FDA is meeting this week to consider giving half doses of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine to people ages 18 to 55. The head of Operation Warp Speed says clinical data shows the vaccine can be just as effective at half doses in that age group. Now the move could make the vaccine available to twice as many people under age 55. Like we said earlier, only 4 million Americans have received their first dose of the two COVID shots required. Officials aren't sure yet if the same half-dose strategy would work with the other approved vaccine from Pfizer. Well, a restaurant in Clackamas County, Oregon is back open for indoor dining. The owner of Carver Hangar says he's doing it for his employees. Brian Mitchell owns three restaurants and has been in business for more than 20 years. His restaurants are now operating as if they were in the high risk category, which allows for indoor dining. He currently has 85 employees and he thinks the restrictions just don't make sense. How can Costco be open? How can Target be open? I, I go shopping and I'm shoulder to shoulder with people. And here, you, it's every other table. It's six feet apart. It's social distancing. It's sanitizing everything. But you can go into any of the big box stores because they have the money to stand up to Kate Brown. And, and it's just, it's not right. Last week, Governor Brown put out a statement saying in part, quote, if businesses reopen too early and instead create new spikes in COVID-19 cases, the actions of a few business owners could set entire communities back and keep them in the extreme risk category for even longer. And over the weekend, hundreds of protesters rallied at Oregon's capital to demand that COVID-19 restrictions be dropped. The event was peaceful, though some protesters left the Capitol grounds and marched to Governor Kate Brown's residence, which Salem police said was an unlawful march. The rally was organized in part by Oregon Women for Trump. Later in the evening, Salem police made several arrests after the protesters encountered a group of counter-protesters. And an Eastern Washington distillery was surprised last week by a $14,000 fine from the FDA 
for making hand sanitizer during the pandemic. However, Vancouver's Quartz Mountain Distillers found out that the fee won't be enforced. Owner Randy Kyle said the distillery began making hand sanitizer in April and gave most of it away to local health care workers. Most distillers that made sanitizer are facing the fine for not properly registering to be allowed to make it, but the Department of Health and Human Services just announced it wouldn't make the FDA enforce the fine after heavy backlash on social media. All right, check this out at 505. Goodbye 2020 and hello 2021. Happy New Year, everybody. New York City rang in this New Year, similar to how they rang it in last year. But of course, there was a major difference. The ball dropped in the Times Square right before midnight, but the crowd of millions that usually watched the festivities weren't there. Crowds were prohibited from flocking to Times Square for the first time since 1904. Millions instead tuned in to the virtual show from home. So, Kristen, what did, what did you do for New Year? <laughs> I was asleep by you probably by eight o'clock. <laughs> That's right. You texted me that and we had a good laugh about that. Yeah, I, but you know, I didn't make it. I did manage to set my alarm though to wake up. Uh huh. To kiss my husband at midnight and went right back to sleep. So, you know, you got up for a minute. I did. And embraced the moment. That's what counts. That, that's exactly. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break here. Good morning, Northwest. But first, let's take that live look outside. And we are looking at a soggy start to the work week. Rain showers continue to come down. More on the wind that is expected this week as well. It's all coming up. Plus, attention dog owners. A recall for some pet food has been issued after it reportedly killed more than a dozen pets. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. A recall alert. The Food and Drug Administration is warning about high levels of aflatoxin in some pet foods after 28 dogs reportedly died from it. The food containing the toxin has been identified as certain sport mix products manufactured by Midwestern Pet Foods. According to the FDA, aflatoxin is produced by a type of mold. It can grow on grains used as ingredients in pet food and can cause illness or death in pets when consumed. Pets poisoned by aflatoxin can display symptoms that include jaundice, loss of appetite, and vomiting. Pet owners can report suspected illnesses online at FDA.gov. And Target is recalling some clothes because they're possible choking hazards. The Cloud Island Infant Rompers and Cat and Jack Infant Toddler One Piece Rash Guard Swimsuits apparently have faulty snaps, and those snaps can break or come off, which poses a risk of choking. Although no choking incidents have been reported, Target has already removed the products from its stores and website. Both items come in various sizes and were sold until October. If you have one, return it to Target for a full refund. Coming up next on Good Morning Northwest, another recall alert, but right here in Washington, why there's a warning for a certain kind of crab. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. The Trump administration has suddenly reversed course and will now keep a U.S. aircraft carrier group in the Middle East. Acting Secretary of Defense Christopher Miller says the USS Nimitz will remain in the Persian Gulf region due to Iranian threats. Yesterday marked the one-year anniversary of the drone strike that killed Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Miller says there have been threats to President Trump and U.S. officials, but didn't provide specifics. Earlier, the acting secretary had ordered the aircraft carrier to leave the area in a move some thought would de-escalate tensions. The Nimitz has spent more than 10 months in the region. In Maryland, a leaked internal memo led to more than 2,000 people signing up to get the COVID-19 vaccine, even though they weren't eligible yet. An email from Holy Cross Hospital included an invitation to sign up for a vaccine shot, but it was only meant to be seen by medical workers. However, it was forwarded to family members and others in the community. The hospital says there's only enough vaccines for active medical staff. I think there was absolutely not an ounce of malicious intent. I, I do believe that people right now are just excited. I would ask for the understanding to know that we must first vaccinate our frontline healthcare workers. Holy Cross is now in the process of canceling all appointments claimed by members of the public. 
And heads up, nearly 29 tons of Dungeness crab is being voluntarily recalled by the Quinal tribe. The crabs are being recalled due to possible elevated marine toxin levels. The toxin is called demoic acid, which can be harmful to people if the contaminated shellfish are eaten. Some symptoms can include vomiting, nausea, and abdominal cramps. The crab was caught by the tribe from December 23rd to 28th and sold to food processors in Washington. Those who purchase the crabs are being told to destroy the product and contact the place where they purchased it. Well, many Washington residents with diabetes will have an easier time affording insulin this year. A state law now imposes a $100 cap on patient co-pays. It applies to any health care plan issued or renewed after January 1st that covers insulin drugs. And it includes language to protect people who have high deductible insurance from paying more than $100 per 30-day supply. The law was approved by the Washington legislature in March. Studies show an estimated one quarter of patients with diabetes ration the medication because of cost or difficulty obtaining steady supplies. Now, Cap gave you first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Kristen Walls. And we had quite the beautiful day yesterday. The sunshine was back out, although those winds were picking up across the area. Now, as you're waking up this morning, the rain has uh, settled back into the area, looking at another round scattered rain showers, at least for the first half of the day today. Uh, the rain is coming down right now in the downtown Yakima area. And the majority of our area, as you can see on Skywatch radar, a lot of green here showing up on the map. So all this is working in from the west this morning in all very light. We even have some snow that is flying up into the mountains early this morning. So a closer look here around the Tri-Cities. Some steady rainfall from Richland down into Kennewick. Even as you travel over into the Yakima area from Sela, Union Gap, even for the Yakima area uh, this morning looking at some uh, scattered rain showers. And the rain is now starting to work into the uh, uh, foothills of the Blues from Milton Freewater. Walla Walla, maybe just a little bit of some drizzle currently. And Athena and Pendleton looking at some steady rainfall for you as well this morning. Now with some of this rain at the lower elevations, there's some uh, winter weather advisory that's in place for the Northern Blues. Uh, that goes until midnight tonight. Similar story back through the Cascades where we have a winter storm warning that is there in pink. About 5 to as much as 15 inches of additional snowfall uh, is expected there. That does include Snoqualmie Pass. So I'll have a look here at your pass reports coming up. But you can see the snow that is flying mainly above 3,000 feet into the Cascades. So uh, mountain pass conditions right now. We have chains for both eastbound and westbound lanes for Snoqualmie Pass. And then traction tires advised for both White and Stevens Pass. And just that overcast sky uh, for Manastash. No travel restrictions there. So as we get you over to Futurecast, plan on the wet weather at least through the lunchtime hour today. There's a look at noon. Turning drier with a little bit of some sun trying to peak out this afternoon, but as the sun peaks out, those winds will start to pick back up across the area. Some of our wind gusts today, 30 to 35 miles per hour. Mainly dry day on Tuesday. Can't rule out maybe a sprinkle or two, but most of the active weather will be back through the eastern slopes in the Cascades. Tuesday night, there's a look at 11 o'clock. More wet weather starts to move back in and another soggy day is in the forecast for your Wednesday. There's 7 a.m. and we'll continue to have some on and off rain showers even through your Wednesday afternoon. Now temperatures out the door this morning. We're at 40 Tri-Cities, upper 30s from Yakima to Ellensburg, 54, so low 50s here from Walla Walla into Pendleton and that's where those winds have been picking up early this morning. You can see about 11 mile per hour wind in Walla Walla, 16 in Pendleton. We're expecting a lot of at least the Columbia Basin into the foothills, those winds to be a bit breezy for today. So temperatures out there for this afternoon back up to about 45 in Yakima, 42 in Ellensburg, 53 today in the Tri-Cities or 50 degrees in Prosser and then 54 in Walla Walla, 53 for Pendleton. So overnight tonight it's going to be a dry night, still uh, breezy conditions uh, down about 35 in the Tri-Cities and 29 for Yakima. But there's your seven day forecast for the Tri-Cities. More wet weather on Wednesday at 48, turning a little bit colder over the weekend. We'll have a dry day Saturday at 42. More rain showers on Sunday, also in the low 40s. And then that seven day forecast for Yakima will have another rain chance there on Wednesday at 43. Dry day, partly sunny on Thursday with a high of 44. Thank you, Kristen. Coming up next, we'll explain how for the first time ever, a U.S. president's inauguration is going virtual. Welcome back. As the clock turns to 524, 
Former longtime CNN host Larry King is hospitalized with COVID-19. A source close to the family says he's been at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles for more than a week. King has had multiple heart attacks and he underwent quintuple bypass surgery in 1987. He's also 87 years old, meaning he's at higher risk for complications from COVID-19. He hosted Larry King Live for more than 25 years. Well, the pandemic has certainly changed how we host events, and that includes President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. Members of the inaugural committee say there will be a virtual parade after Biden is sworn in to minimize crowds. This will be a historic ceremony as the nation watches Biden and the first woman to take the office of vice president. But they're urging people not to travel to D.C. on January 20th. The televised virtual parade will celebrate American heroes and reflect on our nation's diversity and heritage. The event will also feature performances in communities across the country. Those performers will be announced in the coming weeks. Switching gears here at 525, the latest streaming sensation is Ratatouille, the TikTok musical. If you want to make it in the kitchen, yes, you can't just flail your arms around. Right, got it. <laughs> the project went from one TikTok user's tribute to the 2007 animated film to a full-fledged musical featuring Ashley Park as Colette and Andrew Barth Feldman as Linguini. It debuted Friday, January 1st, and raised more than a million dollars for the Actors Fund organization to help struggling performers affected by the pandemic. At $5 a ticket, that's more than 200,000 customers hungry for a musical meal. Yes, getting very creative, mm -hmm. obviously raising money for such a good cause as well. I, absolutely, and I cannot wait to be able to go back and see a musical in person. Yes. There's just nothing like it. All right, coming up next, we're bringing you the highlights of yesterday's game between the Seahawks and the 49ers. I'll tell you why one pass meant more to one player than any of the fans watching. Plus, a mental health crisis escalated into a police standoff in Pasco. And at 526, it is a soggy starts your Monday morning. A look at how long this wet weather is expected to last. A look at your work week forecast. It's all coming up. What I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have. Coming up, President Donald Trump in the last days of his term continuing to deny he lost Georgia in the 2020 election. And dodging a lot of wet weather as we start your Monday. I'll have a look at your work week forecast. It's all coming up. From Camp KV Local News, this is Good Morning Northwest. Good morning, Northwest. I'm Monica Petrozelli, and thanks for waking up with us and starting the very first work week of the new year here. Kristen. Happy 2021. Yes, you as well. And hopefully everyone had a chance to enjoy the new year. Yesterday was beautiful. Sure was. Sun was out. Just felt nice to have that warmth on your skin as you stepped outside. But obviously this morning it is a little bit different. <laughs> Soggy start to our day. So let's get you started with that live look uh, currently right now in downtown Yakima. So we have the rain in Yakima pretty much everywhere that we have here on the map looking at some scattered rain showers moving in. So that does include the Tri-Cities. Steady rainfall now starting to push into the foothills of the blues as well from Walla Walla and also down through the Pendleton area. Some mountain snowfalls even expected where we have some winter uh, storm warnings and winter weather advisories in place. Now temperatures were in the upper 30s from Yakima to Ellensburg. 40 currently for Toppenish into the Tri-Cities and then low 50s where we have those winds picking up from Walla Walla and down into Pendleton. So it will be breezy for today as well, especially there along the foothills of the Blues. So we will have a little bit of some sun, drier conditions for the second half of the day today. Back into the 50s with a high temperature of 53 degrees. We have more wet weather though to track as we take you throughout your work week. I'll have your full forecast, Monica. It's coming up. Thank you, Kristen. A man in his 20s was arrested after a standoff in Pasco yesterday. Police responded to a mental health call at a residence near Owens Avenue and Lewis Street in Pasco around 1130 yesterday morning. Authorities say they heard what appeared to be a gunshot in the area, but they weren't sure where it was coming from. Later in the day, police responded to the same area again, this time for a car prowler with a gun. When they arrived, they found a man involved in the mental health call had barricaded himself in a car with a gun. Police were able to work with SWAT to get the man into custody. 
and roads were reopened just before 5 p.m. And two Pasco men were injured after their ATV flipped in a field and ejected them from their seats. Around 3.30 Sunday morning, family members reported to police that the men hadn't come home Saturday night. A 27-year-old man and a 37-year-old were injured, and one of them critically injured, according to authorities, and was taken to Cadillac for immediate care. Pasco police continue to investigate. An Apasco man is recovering in the hospital after being hit by a car yesterday. At around 6 p.m. last night, 29-year-old Manuel Gutierrez crossed the road on SR 397 near 10th Avenue and was then hit by a car. He was taken to Trios Health Center. The driver, 67-year-old Alfredo Gonzalez, isn't facing any charges. WSP shut down the road in both directions for some time yesterday, but it has since reopened and they're still investigating. Yakima police say a man brutally attacked the mother of his child and then drove the wrong way on a highway, causing a fatal crash. Just after 4 p.m. Friday, police were sent to the area of 9th Avenue and Chestnut Avenue after hearing a report of a 33-year-old man assaulting a 30-year-old woman. As officers were responding, they were told the man had run over the unconscious woman with his truck and had taken a small child from the victim's vehicle. The woman was severely injured and was later flown to Harborview Medical Center. The suspect then dropped the two-year-old child off with family in the Wapato area before driving the wrong way on Highway 97. Officials say that moments later, the suspect's vehicle collided head-on with another car, killing one passenger and injuring another. The suspect was also injured and later flown to Harborview. Well, Seattle police say officers arrested at least one person at a demonstration at the King County Youth Services Center. According to police, employees at the center reported fireworks being set off towards the building. There were also reports of the group causing damage to other nearby buildings. And in Oregon, a Starbucks was among several businesses damaged during a New Year's Eve riot in the streets of downtown Portland. Police say up to 100 people gathered and the crowd grew violent. They say large fireworks were launched at the federal courthouse and at the Justice Center and that some people threw rocks, bricks, frozen water bottles and paint balloons at officers. Some officers were hurt and multiple arrests were made. Online posts said that the protest was in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. Well, President Trump was caught on audio tape pressuring the Georgia Secretary of State to change the election outcome there. The Washington Post broke the story about Saturday's one-hour phone call. In the call, President Trump implies that if Secretary Brad Raffensperger doesn't take action, the Republicans would lose both Senate races. The president tweeted yesterday that he had made the call. Here's an excerpt from the recording. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find... Uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have, because we won the state. So, so tell me, Brad, what are we going to do? Uh, we won the election, and it's not fair to take it away from us like this. And it's going to be very costly in many ways. Bob Bauer, senior advisor to President-elect Joe Biden, called the president's phone call a disgraceful assault on democracy. On Twitter yesterday, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger called the audio recording, quote, absolutely appalling. In sports, the Seahawks rallied yesterday to beat the San Francisco 49ers 26-23. to Seattle came back from a two-touchdown deficit to finish the year 12-4. and The Seahawks enter the playoffs as the number three seed in the NFC and will take on the Rams in the first round of the playoffs next week in Seattle. And if you were surprised to see the Seahawks run a play when they got the ball back with 22 seconds left and a lead against the 49ers, Coach Pete Carroll was too, but there was a reason for Russell Wilson's decision to change the call of a kneel down to a play in which he tossed it quickly to receiver David Moore. It was the 35th reception of the season for Moore, which earned him a $100,000 bonus. Wilson said he heard about Moore's incentive during the week and had it in the back of his head. And when the game got to the final series and Moore still didn't have that catch, Wilson decided to make the call and make sure he got it. All right, here's something to make you smile. Cadillac announced the first baby of 2021 was born at 4.47 a.m. on Friday. 
Annabelle Rose Martinez is the Martinez family's newest addition. How sweet How is adorable. she? Oh, and that little blankie. She weighed in at eight, pound, eight pounds and six ounces. Parents Natalie and Oscar say there's no better way to start the new year and that they are overjoyed, thrilled, and blessed. Annabelle joins her big sister, Elena, who the Martinez's say cannot wait to meet her. That must have been hard, the little sister not being able to go visit I her know, new but sister, it's, but I'm sure I've seen those videos where mm -hmm. the, the, the bigger sister finally meets mm -hmm. the little one and they're so, so precious. What an exciting moment and a great way to start the yes. year. All right, it's now time to raise the flag here on Good Morning Northwest with the Pledge of Allegiance. With schools pretty much closed, we still honor the flag each morning, so please send a photo or video of your child doing the Pledge of Allegiance to pledge at capkbu.com, and we'll share it with viewers. At Archibalds, we believe it's important to keep the traditions that have made our country great. We're proud to support Raise the Flag.